I'm appealing to all Jamaicans to be responsible in the way we celebrate Christmas this year. It should not be about large gatherings of family and friends, but rather we should celebrate with our immediate family, with our immediate household, and try to maintain 15 or less. We are in this together. Let's play our part in helping Jamaica build back stronger. Your favorite magazine program continues with this public service announcement. Agriculture is critical to Jamaica's future. And while we battle COVID-19, the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries continues to help our farmers and fisher folk recover. We will focus on ensuring that Jamaica is food secure, expanding into new export markets, and building sustainable industries. We are building forward together. Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Monday, November 30. The National Reserves will be called out and deployed to assist with security measures across the country throughout December. Prime Minister Andrew Holness made the announcement last Friday. He said the decision was made on the advice of the Chief of Defence Staff and after long discussions at the National Security Council. This is again a part of the strategy of using force without violence, a superior deployment of material and human resources using superior technology, superior logistics, superior operations to control and limit the space of criminals to operate and protect the innocent. Prime Minister Holness said this move was just one of the strategies being deployed to tackle crime and violence. He said government would also continue to advocate for the provision of exceptional powers for the security forces who must act without violence in the execution of their duties. We know that we must find a way to address the crime problem in Jamaica. But without some tools, our powers will be constrained. Without some tools, the measures that are available are not going to yield the immediate results that we need. We need, always should have, not just we need, we always should have available to us the option of using extraordinary pause. Agriculture and Fisheries Minister Floyd Green is assuring the country that there will be sufficient supply of tubers and meat for the Christmas period. He gave the update at the post-cabinet press briefing while reporting on the impact of recent heavy rains which damaged many farms. The good news is that in relation to our tubers, in relation to our meat products, we do have sufficient supply. In fact, this Christmas we expect to have the largest amount of production of chicken as our country has ever seen. In fact, both our producers, our major producers, are higher than pre-COVID levels in relation to production. We expect to see good supply of tubers, so our yams, our potatoes, our sweet potatoes should be in good supply. In relation to vegetables, Minister Green says RADA is continuing its assessment of a drop in the supply chain to determine if alternative measures will be needed to ensure sufficient supplies for Christmas. The Ministry of Agriculture is willing to take those steps. So we are watching very carefully tomatoes, cabbage, lettuce, cantaloupe, squash, zucchini, and cauliflower to see if there needs to be any supplemental supply. The recent heavy rains and some river breaches caused widespread flooding, resulting in about 2,955 hectares of crop losses valued at approximately $2.5 billion. 926 tablets have been issued to 20 schools across Eastern St. Thomas as part of government's Tablets in Schools program. Education Minister Fable Williams presented the devices at a handing over ceremony held recently at Licensed Primary School in the parish. She encouraged the students to use the devices to expand their knowledge. I encourage the students to travel the world using your device. You can go to Japan, Australia, Nigeria, India. You can learn about cultures in those countries. You can ask questions on Google about any topic that you care to. Use the devices to expand your knowledge base. 
Meanwhile, students at Lucy Primary and Sandy Bay Primary and Junior High in Hanover have also received tablets to aid their distance learning. Education Minister Fable Williams handed over 165 tablets to Lucy Primary and 99 to Sandy Bay last Thursday. She again stressed that government was also ensuring that schools have internet connectivity to fully maximize the use of these devices. We're rolling out and making sure that at least 100 schools that did not have internet connectivity, that those schools get it. And I think so far we're probably at 40 of the 100 and the implementation is continuing. There are other schools and we're talking with other vendors to see what else can be deployed all across Jamaica. So far, more than 34,000 of 40,000 devices have been distributed to students under the Tablets in Schools program. The remainder are expected to be distributed over the next few weeks. And finally, Cabinet has given approval for the establishment of a steering committee for the National College for Educational Leadership, NCEL. Minister Fable Williams made the disclosure during the recent virtual post-Cabinet press briefing. The committee will provide support and technical guidance for the operations of NCEL and make recommendations regarding the performance management framework of the body. The committee is to serve for a period of one year. The National College for Educational Leadership was established to improve the quality of leaders and managers in education and to bring greater accountability to the role of school principals. It provides professional development for existing principals and other leaders in the school system. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching. The Disabilities Act will protect the rights of all persons with disabilities. And here's a great teaching moment. Every person with a disability, like a deaf or hard of hearing child, for example, has the right to an education with accessible facilities and the support they need. In this case, it would be a teacher who can use the language of the deaf, which is sign language. Visit jcpdja.com. A message from the JCPD, an agency of the Ministry of Labor and Social Security. Improper disposal of plastic waste has been pinpointed as one of the causative agents of flooding. Find out how you can help reduce and rid the island of plastics. Recycling, the process by which used materials are converted into new usable products. One of those commonly recycled materials is the plastic bottle. It's often used to produce a number of products, from clothing to furniture and even other bottles. But did you know that bottles can be repurposed into a greenhouse? Well, a team from the Richmond Park Primary School in Clarendon not only built a greenhouse, but also created an irrigation system along the way. The JCCP and the UNDP um, involved us into a project in ways how we can sustain the environment. So our school, we came up with the idea of recycling plastic bottles and because we are in the farming, our school is in the 4-H club, we decided to do the greenhouse and plant crops inside of it. We use plastic bottles a lot in our schools and our surroundings and we see them all over the place. So we and the students, we came together with an idea to collect all the plastic bottles in our communities and then we bring them back to our school and then we washed them and then we started to build the greenhouse. This size, it took us one week, exactly one week. Inside, we have six types of drip irrigation system. We have the cone dripper, where we put the plant inside of, we cut the, the liter bottle and put the, the plant inside of it. And the water is absorbed by the absorbent cord into the, the soil that, is, that the, the plant can get um, the water and the nutrients also. And we have the hose dripper. When the water um, runs off the roof and catches into the bucket, it leads to the hose and it waters the plant also. And we have the plant hangers and the syrup bottle, um, self watering system where the water drips from one bottle to the next until it waters all the plants. So you don't have to go every day to water plants. The bottles are there, it's a self-watering system. All you have to do is to pour some water inside the bottles. 
The greenhouse was a hit at the 66th staging of the Denby Agricultural Show in Clarendon and caught the attention of several government ministers, one of whom was the Minister Without Portfolio in the Agriculture Ministry, J.C. Hutchinson, who indicated that this project was in line with something he had been advocating for. What I've been speaking mainly about is the hydroponics, which part of what you see there is the hydroponics where you have the water coming through the plastic bottles to filter to the plants and also you could have aquaponics also where you have the fish below and that filters through the plants through the plastic bottles and come back out. Inside there is cooler than outside here and I think if we can have some of these going it might suit quite a number of persons who might think of setting up house. Reduce, reuse, recycle. The use of plastic bottles in the agricultural sector is definitely becoming a thing. So give it a try. Start a backyard garden and help to rid the country of these pollutants. We all can play our part in helping to make the country a cleaner place and even help to boost the economy. Properly carry out a hand rub, apply a palmful of the product in your cupped hand, covering all surfaces. Rub your hands palm to palm. Rub your right palm over the back of your left hand with interlaced fingers and vice versa. Rub your hands palm to palm with fingers interlaced. Rub the back of your fingers to opposing palms with fingers interlocked. Rotationally rub backwards and forwards the clasped fingers of your right hand in your left palm and vice versa. Once your hands are dry, they are now safe. Did your loved one die recently and not leave a will? Find out how the Administrator General's Department can assist. Why are you knocking down my door? What is it? Jackie, I don't know what to do. From Jason dead, I have nothing to give to the children and I don't know where to turn. So why you didn't go down to the Administrator General's department, the place I told you about the other day? Lord Jackie, I know you try to help me, you know, but members say me and Jason never did marry, you know. What do you mean by that, Anna? The law say. If a single man and a single woman live together as husband and wife for five years and more immediately before death, then he or she is considered a spouse. Really? That means we can't get something then? Because boy, it's rough, you know. Yes, man, just go down there. Tell them about the case that Jason died leaving no will, mm. house and children under 18 years. Go down there and see what them can do for you. A true you talking to Jackie. Where is the place there again? Down a waterfront, man. 12 Ocean Boulevard. Go down there, talk to them, and see if they can help you. Okay, I'm going down there right now. Good morning, madam. How are you? Good morning, miss. I hear that the Administrator General's department can help me. You see? My children, them father died, leaving me with the two pitney them, and I'm me alone I care for them. Did he leave a will? A will, ma'am. After Jason never ready for dead, I come in, I come from work and drop down dead. My friend tell me, say, under the law, I'm considered a spouse. By the way, who is a spouse? Under the Interstates, Estates and Property Charges Act, a spouse is a single man and woman living together as husband and wife for five years or more. 
By living together, the two persons should not have been separated at any time during the five years immediately before death. A surviving spouse includes a person who is legally married, that is, he or she went in front of a pastor and took the vow of marriage. If Anna meets the requirements, she can hire an attorney at law or go to the legal aid clinic to apply for an order from the court declaring that she's a spouse. Some of the questions the court will look at are, did Anne and Jason break up during the five years? Did Jason have any children, born in the same year as Anna's children? The court will also want to know if Anna or Jason were married before and not divorced. Once the order has been granted, the spouse would be entitled to benefit from the estate of the deceased. For further information, you can visit the Administrator General's Department in Kingston, 3rd floor at the Office Center Building, 12 Ocean Boulevard, or call us at 922-183023. You can also visit our Western office at the second floor of the National Housing Trust Building at 42B Union Street, Montego Bay, St. James. Telephone 630-4261. Our website is at www.agd.gov.jm. That's the Administrator General's Department, securing your legacy. The Office of the Children's Advocate is very aware that we have some parents who get particularly anxious at the start of a new school year. And so we really just wanted to share with you a few tips that you can utilize to help keep your children, especially the very young ones who are going out for the first time, nice and safe from sexual abuse. Parents need to recognize that the private parts, as we call them, or the genitalia, are regular parts of the body. And so in teaching your children about the forehead and the nose and the hand, you can also teach them the names of these body parts because that does two things. It puts them in a position to speak about these parts when something is going wrong. And it also tells them that even though they are private parts, it's not too private to talk about, particularly with a parent. Children need to know that there should be no secrets between them and their parents or guardians. Oftentimes, when persons want to abuse children, they tend to encourage them to keep a little secret. You know, this is between me and you. But from very early, parents need to establish with their children that the lines of communication are open. Mommy and daddy, or auntie and uncle, or whoever is the responsible adult in that child's life, can actually have a discussion, age appropriate of course, about anything at all that may be troubling the child. The third tip, is that parents need to cultivate throughout the child's lifespan that environment whereby the child feels comfortable to speak. Conversation should not be off limit, topics should not be taboo, and you really need to get to a stage whereby you have teachable moments, we call them. So we see a lot of things reported in the newspapers, sometimes on the nightly news, and we can use some of these instances of horrible things that are happening to other children to start little discussions with our own children to give them tips as to how they can avoid or prevent, um, perhaps completely, any such reality happening to them. For these tips and of course any other information that deals with children, that is anyone under 18 years, please feel free to contact the Office of the Children's Advocate. We're at 72 Harbour Street, downtown Kingston, and our numbers are 948-1134, or website www.oca.gov.jm. Well, I did I make a difference, and I did I take a stand. Let me dare you to think of someone else who's in need of a helping hand. But if I did... Did you know that nearly 50% of cervical cancer cases brought on by the human papilloma virus result in death? Hear how the Ministry of Health and Wellness is working to reverse those figures. Globally, 
Cervical cancer is the second most common type of cancer in women with over 85% occurring in developing countries. Every year, 528,000 new cases are diagnosed and there are approximately 270,000 deaths. By 2050, without any intervention, the number of diagnosed cases of cervical cancer is expected to increase to 1 million per year, with approximately 90% of the deaths occurring in developing countries like ours. A major factor is the human papilloma virus, HPV, of which there are approximately 200 types that infect epithelia, or skin tissue. At least 14 types of the human papilloma virus have been found to cause cancer of the cervix. Types 16 and 18 are responsible for 70% of cancers of the cervix, which is a second leading cause of cancer-related deaths in Jamaica. The virus can be transmitted through skin-to-skin -skin contact, from mother to child at birth. Current estimates indicate that every year, just under 400 women are diagnosed with this disease, with approximately 185 dying from the disease, with the majority of deaths occurring in women between the ages of 40 and 64 years of age. A prevalence study conducted in Jamaica in 2010 revealed that the overall prevalence of any type of HPV infection was 54%. Cancer-causing HPV types were detected in 34.9% of the women, and HPV types 16 and 18 were found in 10.5% of the general population and in 71% of women with abnormal pap smears. This reality has prompted the Jamaican government to take the initiative to prevent cervical cancer through the introduction of the bivalent human papilloma virus HPV vaccine. The World Health Organization, WHO, recommends that HPV vaccines be included in national immunization programs as a core strategy for primary prevention against cervical cancer. WHO states, Mr. Speaker, that HPV vaccination for girls ages 9 to 14 years is the most cost-effective public health measure against this disease. More than 70 countries around the world, including more than 20 countries in Latin America and the Caribbean, have already introduced the vaccine. Several studies and monitoring by the World Health Organization, WHO Global Advisory Committee on Vaccine Safety, proved that HPV vaccination is safe and works extremely well, decreasing the number of HPV infections and related precancers. The bivalent HPV vaccine introduced by the Ministry of Health in schools at grade 7 to girls ages 9 to 14 provides for 90 to 100% protection against HPV types 16 and 18. The vaccine is offered free of cost. Bear in mind too, by the way, that the cost to administer one of these vaccines, for us, the cost is somewhere in the region of seven, eight US dollars. If you go into the private sector, you're looking at anywhere from 11 to $15,000. So it's not inexpensive. This vaccine is not mandatory, and beneficiaries received opt-out forms for parents and guardians to give or refuse permission for their girl child to receive the vaccine. We can take it that the indication, if anything, is that they want this. They identify with this. I remember one girl indicated that her mother actually called her aunt, who is a nurse, for advice, so that spells good. It says that persons are prepared to consult, get information, and then make informed decisions. And so that is going well. Approximately 22,500 girls were targeted for the vaccine's introduction in 2017, with each girl needing two doses given six months apart for full protection. Generally speaking, the process has gone smoothly. 
the school-based strategy for implementation seeks to facilitate greater access to the targeted population. This covers the cost for social mobilization and communication, cold chain equipment, training and sensitization, and procurement of vaccine and vaccination supplies. And this disease prevention strategy will save the government millions. The Ministry of Health estimated that annual cost for the program after introduction will be 73.3 million Jamaican dollars. In Jamaica, the estimated cost is of, of the just under 400 cases annually, Mr. Speaker, is some $274 million. I should point out that this figure is only for radiotherapy and does not include diagnosis and chemotherapy. And for the individual, not just the emotional and physical trauma caused by this cancer is removed, but the financial burden. In the United States, cost on diagnosis is approximately some 15,000, 15, just under 16,000 US dollars. If the patient survives for a year, this right goes up to approximately 30,000 US dollars. Despite vaccination, persons will still need to do their routine pap smear to check for any threat or signs of the cancer, as the key to effective treatment if it should occur, is early detection. For more information, or to have your concerns answered, you can call the Ministry of Health's toll-free line, 1-888-1-LOVE, or 1-888-663-5683. Also email hpvinfo at moh.gov.jm. You can also visit the website moh.gov.jm as well as social media channels. Protect yourself from the flu virus. Visit your nearest health center or doctor to get the flu vaccine. Cover your mouth and nose when coughing and sneezing. Wash your hands regularly with soap and water or by using an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Avoid the spread of germs by not touching your eyes, mouth, or nose. And be sure to regularly disinfect surfaces and objects that are used often. Remember, your health is your responsibility. That's all the time we have left on this station, but be sure to join us tomorrow for another information-packed program. Missed aspects of this and other shows? Well, watch it from the beginning on our website or our YouTube channel. Keep connected with us through social media and download our mobile app for up-to-date government information that impacts your daily lives. On behalf of the entire team here at the JIS, I'm Theodore Henry. Thanks for watching. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.